Um, good day, everyone. I'm not sure if I've met um, most of you guys, actually seeing quite a few names I don't recognise, but um, my story begins. I grew up in the fellowship in, in the UK, in London. Um, and then when I was about 18, I relocated to, to Perth, uh, moved there out of home and um, fellowship there until earlier this year and moved uh, to Sydney to see what the East Coast has got in store for us. So it's um, great to be in the family of God. And it was actually pretty awesome because um, one of the scriptures that I was toying up using in, uh, today was one of the ones that you guys just mentioned, um, Pastor Nick and Brenda, in, in, in Proverbs. So it's um, always quite reassuring when you're not sure if you're barking up the wrong tree or not. And then and then God drops you a little hint like that. So um, we know at least one verse would have been good there. But um, what I wanted to talk a, a little bit about today is is moving and the joy of moving, which again seems to be pretty uh, related to some photos that we just saw there, the joy of moving and being out of, of braces and, and awful situations again. Um, the reason that I wanted to talk about that is because um, we were fortunate enough to be in the UK for the bath camp or the bath camp, depending on which side of England you're from. Um, and on quite a few occasions, scriptures were brought up about movement. Um, one guy talked about flowing water, keeping bad things moving. And I thought, okay, that's a cool point. Um, and a couple of other people just talked about um, a few things to do with that. Didn't think too much of it. Um, but then when we landed back in Sydney, the first Sunday meeting I went back to, um, a couple of scriptures came up that were used in England. So I thought, okay, there's a nice little theme there and, and we'll go and, and we'll run with that. Um, we're going to spend most of our time today just kind of looking at one verse. Um, we've got a couple of other scriptures to support um, a few bits and pieces. Uh, but if you want to turn to John chapter 8 for us. Now, this is actually a verse that I'm pretty sure most people here have, have read quite a few times. And some of you might be able to quote it word for word. Uh, but someone said something to me the other day at work, which I thought is really transferable to, to the way in which we read the Bible, particularly if we've been, you know, coming to a church for quite a while. Um, and they were saying that, you know, if, if you listen as if you've never heard, then you're more likely to learn. And, you know, the point was something that I've been able to to chuck straight into into my reading of the Bible, particularly with these verses that we hear a lot in the Revival Fellowship, but also on, you know, calendars and all of that sort of things are nice to say verses. Sometimes I'm guilty of skimming through them because I go, yeah, I've heard that one. Um, but if we listen as if it's the first time we've ever read it, um, that's when we're most likely to pick up a few bits. So if you want to do that with me as we read verse 12 together, uh, it says, Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Um, and that's for quite a while been, been a very sort of up the top 10 for me in, in the charts. I love that scripture. I think it's nice and simple, but it's also quite vivid. <clears throat> and I, I like to break it down into a few different parts. You've got the first part, which is saying, I am the light of the, word, uh, the world. The second part talking about uh, he that followeth me shall not walk in darkness. And then the third part is the opposite to that, but shall have the light of life. Um, now, the, the way my sort of imagination um, works is casting me back into any time I've spent out bush or away from city lights and... Um, being in places which are pitch black. I'm sure there's people here who've seen that. Um, if I've seen it, I'm sure everybody else has. But um, the first time I saw that being from London was, wasn't until I was about 18 or 19 years old. And um, I was quite surprised by the, the sensation of having no point of reference. You know, usually if there's a street lamp, you can see shadows after a little while or something like that. But being in the pitch black, I didn't know if I was in a field or if I was in a bedroom or a corridor or, or wherever I was. Um, and I had no understanding of, of how I could get myself back to the house that I'd come from. And that sort of is something that ties into that first part of the, the verse there where it says, God is the light of the world. You know, immediately, as soon as you introduce one light source into a dark place, you've got a way out. You've got a, a waypoint. You've got something to head towards. Um, and that's why I guess lighthouses were uh, became a thing. Um, but so that's that's a bit of an interesting one for me, particularly because he says God is the light. You know, he uses it in, as a singular. He's not saying God's the brightest of the lights or the biggest of the lights or the best of the lights. He's saying there's there's no other light. You're in darkness unless it's because of me. Um, and I thought that's a really sort of strong point. Um, we can identify things that are maybe tempting or look shiny, but they're not light. They're false lights. Um, there's only the one light. And, and he's pretty definite about that. The, the next part of that verse talking about he that follows me shall not walk in darkness. Um, I wanted to hone in on the word follows there because it, it's a decision-based word. 
you know, it doesn't it doesn't talk about he that is dragged to meetings by mum and dad or he that is, you know, forced in by um, the people who tell him to do things. It, it shall go and into it doesn't walk in the darkness. It talks about those who follow and follow as is a choice, as I said there. Um, the interesting thing with with following is it's not just a one off. You know, it's not a decision that you make at the start. I'm going to follow something. Uh, it's a decision you have to make every time uh, you're faced with an alternative. So if we're following someone with a light, every time we go, actually, I'm getting a bit tired, might have a seat or, you know, we go, oh, what, what's on the path over to the left? Or surely there's a shortcut this way. Um, that's when we're faced with a decision to follow the light or not. Um, so if you could turn to Revelations 21. Um, just while we're flicking there, one of the things that I also thought about in, in you know, as I was thinking about myself being lost on a farm in, in New Zealand, uh, it was where I first sort of saw pitch black. Um, when someone finally did come along with a torch, I couldn't see exactly where we were going. I couldn't see, you know, every step that we were going to be taking. Um, but they said, oh, we're going back, back inside now. We're going home. Um, so I believed what they told me, but I didn't know exactly how long that journey was going to take. I didn't know if there was a little stream in the way, if the ground was going to be uphill, downhill. Um, but I knew that we were going home. And that's sort of the same promise that we've been made. You know, we don't know exactly how long um, the rest of the journey is. You know, God might do everybody in the call a favor and cut me off short, um, or we might be here for a little while longer, um, still in the last days until he comes back. Um, but we've been promised um, a, a safe destination, and that's what we've been promised here in Revelations 21 and verse 4. Uh, it says, And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. So, Again, what we've been told there is, is eventually all the, all the woes, all the challenges, um, all the cardio that we don't want to do of, of the journey when we're following the light becomes completely history. You know, it's former things that passed away. It's nothing to do with the light that we enter into once we reach our destination. Um, and then I kind of sort of was thinking a little bit about this lightness and darkness scenario. And one thing I sort of noticed when I was following my mate back who had a torch, um, the closer I was to my mate, the more I could see. And it sounds kind of obvious, but I'm kind of simple. So um, I needed the example. Uh, what I sort of, you know, you draw that into the verse in John that we read. The further we are away from the light, the more likely we are to trip over things. And I can definitely attest to that in, in my own walk spiritually. You know, I often use them as symptoms and sort of that I need to get closer to the light is when little things start to, to distract me or trip me up or make me stumble a little bit. That's when I know I've drifted a little bit from the light and I need to make the effort to get closer because when we're closer, those little sort of spiritual hazards, those little potholes, those little sort of trip hazards, we can navigate them with almost without trying, you know, because we're, we're so aware of them and we can, we can calibrate our, our sort of walking to that pretty easily. Um, and then it kind of um, sort of got me thinking a little bit about the, the story of the prodigal son. You know, it's probably the most obvious example of someone who drifted quite far away from, from the light. Um, and what I was thinking is that when he made the decision that he was going to go home, there wasn't a five chapter epic about him, you know, going over mountains and answering trolls, riddles under bridges and things like that. It was once he'd made the decision to go home, he knew exactly where to go. And he went straight back to his father. And that's the sort of same for us. You know, it's, um, it's, it's pretty obvious in a dark place where the light is. We know how to get there. Uh, we know what to do to get there. And it was actually something that was kind of prompted in thought to myself by um, being at the bath camp. I guess it's sort of a bit of a testimony as well. Um, I hadn't been back to the UK in about six years. Um, and in going back to the, the Revolve Fellowship over there, there was probably about eight or nine people who had left years and years ago. You know, for whatever reason, they'd strayed from from the light. And a couple of them, it was been about 20 years and they were at the camp and they're in fellowship and, they're, and they've pulled themselves back in. And they all kind of in, in one phrase or another said the same thing, which was once I made the decision, it was an easy journey. And I want to kind of back that up with a, a scripture in Zechariah. And chapter one. Um. So, so we know that the, the journey back's easy and, and we know what's waiting for us there, which is verse three. It says, therefore say unto them, 
Thus saith the Lord of hosts, turn ye unto me, saith the Lord of hosts, and I will turn unto you, saith the Lord of hosts. Um, now, I've never said the phrase, saith the Lord of hosts, so many times in my life, but if we kind of move them out of the way to help our understanding, we've just left with, turn ye unto me, and I will turn unto you. Nice and simple. You know, these people, the prodigal son, the testimonies of those, those people who have drifted a little bit, once they made the call to come back towards the light, once they made the call to go back home, they turned unto God. God was there for him. Um, so just to kind of summarize the, the points that we made about that verse in John 8 there, um, the first is that, you know, following is a choice. Um, and it's a, a choice that we have to make regularly. Um, it's just easier if we remain close to the light. It's just easier. You know, it's um, not rocket science there. Uh, but if we do find ourselves with a bit of distance between where we are and where we want to be, it's um it's a really simple simple path to take it's quite an obvious direction um so yeah those were the thoughts i had on moving and i just want to leave it there